V.I. Lenin. Lenin was the person responsible for the Russian Revolution. He was a Marxist revolutionary secretly returned to Russia by the Imperial German Army with the expectation he would create havoc in Russia. Lenin did more than create havoc. He successfully overthrew the democratic government of Russia that had succeeded the deposed Tsar. Lenin's communists established the dictatorship of the proletariat that was really the dictatorship of Communist Party professional revolutionaries. Lenin created the Soviet Union, and in creating the Soviet Union, created the first communist country in the world. As part of its reason for existing, the Soviet Union made itself the base for spreading Marxist-Leninist communism. Joseph Stalin Stalin was Lenin's successor when Lenin died. He was certainly not Lenin's choice to lead the party or the nation. Stalin was a ruthless man who became increasingly suspicious of all about him for the duration of his life. Lenin's economic goal was to modernize the USSR by building heavy industry. To that end, he sacrificed everything else, including his own people's lives. Stalin's view of international relations was less ideological than Lenin's. Stalin put Russian nationalism and the interests of the Soviet Union ahead of communism because he saw communism and Russian interests as the same. Italy Benito Mussolini Mussolini was a bombastic Italian who had stumbled through a number of rapid careers, including teacher and journalist, before moving to the right in Italian politics and becoming the head of the Italian Fascist Party. Blustery showmanship was Mussolini's personal trade in stock that was leveraged through the press and some head-banging into a charismatic appeal to the Italian people. Stage-managed events were intended to project Mussolini as the epitome of virility, and thus the national symbol of manly Italian assertiveness. An Italy that worked, an Italy that followed the lead of one man, of course Mussolini, and a new empire were Mussolini's and the fascists' political goals. Their tactics involved fighting and physically destroying the left, especially the communists and the socialists, creating a state-directed economy, indoctrinating citizens into fascist thinking, the use of paramilitary black shirts to intimidate those who might waver, and the supposed reconstruction of a powerful Italian military. Germany, Adolf Hitler. Hitler became Chancellor of Germany in 1933. He assumed control of a coalition government full of right-wing politicians, all of whom believed they were better politicians than Hitler and that they could control Hitler once he became chancellor. Hitler was the leader of the NSDAP, or National Socialist German Workers' Party. Since the party name was a mouthful in the English word world, it was converted to Nazi Party. Between 1933 and 1939, Hitler worked carefully to maintain his all-powerful leadership of the Nazi Party, while constantly expanding his control over the government of the Third Reich, as Germany was called in the Nazi years. Hitler absorbed a number of political posts into his own person. He also replaced the government personnel with loyal Nazi Party members. Finally, he created a Nazi party structure that paralleled many government institutions, allowing him to switch from government to party or party to government in order to achieve his goals. Hitler's oft-stated goal for Germany were abnegating the Treaty of Versailles that ended World War I, gaining more land for Germany by annexing lands in Eastern Europe, and asserting German nationalistic supremacy in the international arena. From 1934 forward, Hitler's policies in Germany and in the international relations were aimed at the outbreak of a war in Eastern Europe in 1941. Spain 
Francisco Franco. Franco was a conservative general in the Spanish army. Soldiers loyal to Franco and the Spanish colonial army were the basis of his takeover of Spain. Franco waged an old-fashioned civil war that pitted his coalition of proto-fascist clerics and aristocrats in a war against the leftist government in Madrid. Germany and Italy supported Franco, while the Soviet Union supported the government in Madrid. The winner of this proxy war was the fascist Nazi side. Franco became dictator of Spain. France. The French government during the 30s was a muddle. The man you see on the left is Leon Blum. Blum led a coalition government called the United Front that that um, governed France during the time of the Spanish Civil War. He was succeeded by the man in the middle, Edwin de Ladier. De Ladier was the French Prime Minister at the time of the Munich Accords. And of course on the right is Colonel Charles de Gaulle who became the leader of the Free French after the war uh, began. Britain, Stanley Baldwin. Baldwin was British Prime Minister for most of the 30s, a member of the Conservative Party. Baldwin was sometimes sarcastically referred to as the ironmonger because he was a businessman who made his fortune in the iron business. As Prime Minister, Baldwin ran the government much as he ran his own business with an eye to income and expenditures. It was the Great Depression, and Baldwin made his cuts in the British gov government's budget needed to balance the books. These cuts often came at the expense of defense particularly from the funds allotted to the Admiralty. As the decade of the 30s came to an end, Baldwin retired from the Prime Minister's post, allowing a member of his cabinet to succeed him at Number 10 Downing Street. The, that member of the cabinet was Neville Chamberlain. Chamberlain came from the, by then, well-established Conservative Party Chamberlain family, with service to the Crown going back almost a century. Drab, plain-spoken, and personally uninspiring, Chamberlain headed a government that faced Britain's most severe decisions of the 20th century. Chamberlain would need to make decisions about building up the RAF, dealing with Hitler's demands on Czechoslovakia, and finally what to do about Hitler's invasion of Poland. Winston Churchill was a gadfly in the side of the conservative governments of Baldwin and, Church and Chamberlain. A conservative backbencher, Chamberlain, Duff Cooper, and Sir Robert Vansittart at the Foreign Office consistently pressed the government to increase preparedness for war with Germany. When Britain finally went to war with Germany, the Chamberlain government fell. A war coalition government was created with Churchill as the Prime Minister. He remained Britain's Prime Minister until the unconditional surrender of the Third Reich. United States Franklin D. Roosevelt Roosevelt was elected President in 1932, defeating the incumbent Herbert Hoover, who Americans were now blaming for the nation's worst depression in history. Roosevelt was a former Undersecretary of the Navy under Woodrow Wilson, the 1920 Democratic Party candidate for vice president and governor of New York before becoming president. Roosevelt was elected by the American people to do something about the Depression. Domestic politics, especially the economy, were Roosevelt's primary focus. Roosevelt gave attention to international affairs. Throughout the 30s, he expressed concern about the rise of authoritarian dictators and questioned their ambitions and motives. Legislation that forced neutrality on the American government gave Roosevelt very little room to maneuver diplomatically when it came to events in Europe and East Asia. Nevertheless, Roosevelt continued to seek national preparedness for war he felt could not be kept from American doorsteps. Roosevelt's two important cabinet members with regard 
to the coming of the Second World War were Secretary of State Cordell Hall and Henry Stimson, who became Roosevelt's Secretary of War. Stimson was a Republican and had been the Secretary of State for Roosevelt's predecessor, Herbert Hoover. <laughs> 